Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk about the question, why are there so many different churches? Now, I know that's a complicated question and there are a lot of different answers, but I think it's safe to say that Jesus wanted his followers to be unified. In fact, unity was something that was so important to him, it was one of the last things he prayed about before he went to the cross. In John 17, he prayed that all believers would be one, even as he was one with the Father. And the reason that was so important is because it was one of the ways the world would know that Jesus was from God. So Jesus obviously cared about unity. It was something that was important to him and still is. And so it's something that should matter to us. And yet, too often when we look around at the religious world, unity isn't really what we see. So why is that? I think one reason is that even though Christians all believe in Jesus, we don't always go by the same standard. In addition to looking at the Bible as a guide for what we believe in practice, sometimes people will rely on other writings, or they'll add importance to the teachings of certain men and women. And whenever these different standards are brought in, it shouldn't surprise us that unity is hard to come by. But I want to narrow down our focus even further. Even among Christians who agree that the Bible is the only standard, we can still struggle to find unity. So how is it that people with good hearts and honest motives who sincerely want to follow the Bible can still struggle to be unified? One of the answers to that question has to do with how we decide what we practice and teach. Do we practice and teach everything in the Bible simply because it's in the Bible? Or is there a process we go through to determine which of those things actually apply to us? One of the things we find in the scriptures is that God gives specific instructions to specific people at specific times. Take Noah, for instance. In Genesis 6, God gives Noah instructions to build an ark, and those instructions are specific and they're important, but you're going to have a hard time making the case that God wanted every Christian to follow those instructions. Why? Because they're specific to Noah. The same thing is true of the Israelites in the Law of Moses. There are a lot of things in that law that we don't practice today. Things like animal sacrifice, and laws about what you could eat or what you could wear. And those things are in the Bible. So if they're in the Bible, why don't we practice them? It's because the Bible also makes the case that the law of Moses was for a certain group at a certain time, and that it would be fulfilled and replaced when Jesus was crucified. The problem is, it's not uncommon for religious people today to go back to the law of Moses and to practice and teach things that they find in that law and to make the case that they have the right to do that because those things are found in the Bible. But that presents a couple of problems. For one thing, it's inconsistent. We can't take parts of the Law of Moses to practice and leave the rest of it behind because the Law of Moses functions as a complete unit. It would be like trying to construct a house with building codes where you keep the parts of the code that you like or that are easy or familiar but whenever you come across a part of the code that's too difficult, or you don't know how to do, or it's too expensive, you just decide to leave that out. Bad news, your house isn't going to pass inspection because the building code functions as a whole. The other problem that happens when we go back to the Law of Moses is that we practice things from a law that's obsolete. I mentioned earlier that the Law of Moses was for a specific time, but that it was fulfilled and replaced when Jesus was crucified. To go back to our building code analogy, imagine preparing to construct your house, and as you looked over the building codes that were most recent, you noticed some things you wanted to do that the codes prohibited, or maybe some things you didn't want to do that the codes demanded. What if instead of building up to the most recent codes, you decided to build your house according to codes that you found from the 1950s because they were more lenient? Bad news your house is still going to fail inspection because you used codes that were obsolete and out of date. The same thing happens when we try to go back and practice things from the Law of Moses. And I believe it's one of the reasons that there are so many different churches today. That there are so many divisions among people who try to follow the Bible. is because we try to go back and take things from a part of the Bible that's been done away with at the cross. So ultimately, does this really even matter? If we like certain things from the Law of Moses and want to practice and teach them, does it really make a difference to God? I hope you'll join me in our next video as we try to tackle that question.